And the final game that we'll break down here was a- another back and forth game. This maybe not as entertaining. UCF and Boise State was there were there were highlights, that's for sure, but a very boring game if you are a fan of offenses. Maybe not offenses because UCF had 530 yards of total offense. But if you're looking for a barn burner, this is not your game. Uh, and I think th- I think that's hard because 18 to 16 is so boring. And you obviously have to find ways to win, and that's what UCF did. But it's tough. And I think both teams feel like this game should have gone a little differently. And if you're if you're UCF. We'll start with this. If you're UCF, I don't see how you can feel great about this win. No disrespect to Boise, but the fact that you struggled to put up 18 points says that you are in for a long season in the Big 12 because Boise State's defense is good. And honestly, if we'll give credit where credit's due, Boise State's defense was swarming and did everything they could to keep UCF off the scoreboard. And I think that this defense will be one of the best that UCF sees all year. However, they are not going to face an abysmal offense like Boise State's the rest of the year either. I think that Boise State has a lot of work to do offensively. And it starts with the quarterback position. But UCF is not going to see that level of struggle from another team the rest of the season. At least I don't think, especially not when you get to Big 12 play. So that's definitely something that they need to work on. If you're Boise State, you're own two suddenly, and that's not what you expected. That is definitely not where you thought you'd be sitting after week two. And the quarterback position we'll dive into later, but that is the position that is going to make or break your season. When you have a stud like Ashton Genty, who had another huge game, 212 yards and one touchdown, This kid is phenomenal. And if you have not watched Ashton Gendy play football, you are missing out. He is so fun to watch. And I'm worried how they'll overuse him this year because of how much this offense has struggled. But worst case scenario is that he's really fun to watch and he gives you some entertainment. So there is something to be said about that. He was fun to watch. I would watch him every single week do what he did because he did that against Washington and now he did it again against UCF. So you should expect more of that the rest of the season. The one thing we talked about coming into this game was which quarterback could be more consistent. And the answer was neither. The answer was very disappointing and quarterbacks combined through one touchdown and three interceptions. And Taylor green obviously goes out with an injury. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. So Madsen comes in. And they looked a little bit better, but John Rice Plumley was okay. I it feels like if Javon Baker and Kobe Hudson are two of the most misused or underutilized wide receivers in college football, and there were times where like, Javon Baker made an incredible catch tonight, and it was just like just a reminder that this is not a pass friendly offense this is not i mean when you can't it's almost like when you can't throw the football ucf's offense becomes pretty boring and pretty predictable and then you have to almost continue throwing the ball because you have to find balance and john rice Plumley just isn't going to be that quarterback for you but also i feel like they i feel like the coaching staff also is very quick to kind of slow down and shy away from throwing kind of the deep ball. And I I just, you're, I'd argue that two of UCF's best playmakers on offense are Hudson and Baker. It's just that you don't see the production for them because they're not in an offense that allows them to showcase their talent as much as you should. Now Plumlee's explosive. He's not the greatest passer. I still think that he can be a lot better than he is. We've seen it before. It's just, he doesn't do it as often. RJ Harvey is a really good running back. So the talent is there. And the reason why I say that this is not a great win for UCF is because you should have won this game by a lot more. Your defense did 
a lot to keep you in this game. And you, the fact you had 530 yards of total offense and only put up 18 points is concerning going forward. You can't find a passing attack. This is this is a passing attack. I should, let's say this: this Boise State pass defense. Got shredded by Michael Penix for 450 yards and five touchdowns. John Rice Plumley obviously is not Michael Penix, but there's clearly some weaknesses in this passing attack that you could have exploited, and they just didn't. So it's a solid win. You're beating a good team in Boise State, or maybe not good because they're on two, but a team that's a, a solid team, a tough team to beat. But you have to tip your hat, I guess, to Boise State to be able to, to to bend but not break. The fact they gave up 530 yards and only 18 points says that they just they they did what they could to keep their team in in the game. And when you have a quarterback issue, now granted, losing Taylor Green to an injury obviously hurt, and it didn't feel like he was doing anything that was giving you consistency until Madsen came in. Then it felt like the offense had a chance to be explosive, but that point it felt like too little too late so we'll see what happens going forward is green going to be the guy what have we seen from green that says maybe he should be the guy going forward do they have a quarterback controversy or a quarterback battle we will see because when you look at the stats nothing really stands out only was 16 to 24 for 272 yards zero touchdowns and two interceptions green was 9 of 19 another rough game for him 144 one and one it's just not inspiring it does not threaten any defense it does not make any defense respect your passing attack you have to find a way to push the ball downfield and like i said there's a lot of talent on both sides of these of these teams you have talent at wide receiver that can be utilized well maybe boise state just has to use ash and genty as much as possible and maybe that's just their option but for UCF, this is a UCF team that their fan base has been expecting big things from them since 2017. They have been expecting them to go into a Power 5 conference and command attention and command respect. If you're only beating a Boise State team that struggles a lot by two points on a game-winning field goal, which shout out to Colton Boomer, dude. Four of four on field goals, including the game winner, good for you. You got to figure things out, though. This is, if you're UCF, this should not be an acceptable result. It should not be what you expect from your team. And going forward, you have to figure things out. And maybe you can't make a quarterback change because there's not really a ton to to warrant that. But there's clearly something that's lacking, and you have to figure that out. Now, the defense obviously did its part, too. That's really exciting. I think that's going to help UCF when it gets into Big 12 play. And that was a good a good way to continue the success for a week two. So there are some good things. UCF did a lot of good things defensively. That Boise State out the board. Didn't have an answer for Ashton Genty, but they had an answer for everybody else. So one guy is probably not going to beat you by himself, especially in the game of football. But there are things that could get better. There are things that could improve for both sides. But UCF obviously comes away with a win. They are 2-0. and Boise State needs to figure some things out. They are 0-2. But I think Boise State now is kind of entering that sleeper territory in the Mountain West. So don't sleep on them. They'll still be a tough team to beat. And it'll be interesting to see how both teams perform in Week 3 and Week 4. And then once you get the conference play, what do they look like there? Because this was a struggle of a game. It was disappointing for both sides. There were also a couple things you can build upon. But I think that this coaching staff will be looking, both coaching staffs will be looking at the film and thinking, how do we get better? And how do we make sure that we don't struggle this much the rest of the season?